Welcome back to the Garden of Enders. while since we did a video. Um, didn't really have a lot to uh, share. We ripped out the old stuff in the garden and got ready for fall and we'll be planting that up or we'll take you along on that. But um, we were really waiting because I wanted to do a follow-up on our tropicals um, that we had some struggles with. And so um, the first was the Meyer lemon um, and uh, rehabilitating it and, and bringing it back um, from what it was, uh, and of course it, it still kind of looks Charlie Brownish, right? Um, but we, we've had a lot of uh, success, and so um, tons of uh, new growth. I don't know if you can see this here. Um, all of these leaves, first of all, on this side are all new, but we've got growth coming out here, growth coming out on the side, more growth shooting out there. Um, there's tons of little buds that are popping out, um, so we're, we're getting a lot. I was concerned that I, I didn't really see any new growth on this side because of the root rot. I was wondering if, if this side of the plant was damaged, you know, were we not getting any? Um, and then pawn inspection, you won't be able to see it, it's very small. Uh, I started noticing little nodes of leaves that are, that are coming out on this side of uh, of the tree and we haven't lost any more leaves um, so uh, it's just uh, it's taken some time but but it's happening and so we're very excited about that lemon trees and your your citrus trees are such fighters um, you know I was talking to a guy at a local um, greenhouse here in town um, and we love going to and um, he has a tree that's like a hundred and five years old um, he got the tree when it was 75 years old. The lady had it for 75 years, um, and he inherited it, um, and he's had it for like 35 years. So 105, 110, whatever that is, my math is terrible. Um, and he was telling me that they're fighters, and he dealt with root rot on that old tree, and that it really was discouraging because he didn't want to lose it, and he learned a lot about it um, in the process of fixing it. And this, this root rot that we developed, I mean, it may take... Uh, years before we, we get over it um, and and this plant produces as vigorously as it as it once did but we'll get there um, and it's just gonna take some time but I've been putting it behind us here I'll have my uh, lovely wife here scan over that's the little greenhouse structure that I built um, for these and you can see all the droplets in there all that dew and humidity um, it's normally sitting over top of these um, and right before I put the plants in, uh, I give them a spritz down the, uh, just to create a little bit of humidity on them, not much, um, and, uh, and then put them in. And, and this is the kumquat, as you can see, it's, it's doing phenomenal. Um, it's, it's really doing well. These are actually kind of changing slight color here. Super excited about this. Um, but as you can see, the soil, it's bone dry. Um, and, and that's really the key. You want to let um, you want to let your citrus uh, plants really dry out. They they just they don't like wet feet. Um, they really like to be dry. And so and if I stick my finger down in here, it's still a little moist deep down inside. So the top couple layers are not uh, moist, and that's okay. So you always want to check by at least sticking your finger down about two inches to feel and it's still moist down there so I'm not going to water this. Uh, a lot of people would see the top of that and they'd go oh my gosh we got to water. Uh, this thing is, is uh, I don't want it to die but it's believe me uh, they they can take a lot so let them, let them dry out. Uh, if you have one of these and you're experiencing problems you're probably watering it too much or um, not watering it enough. Sometimes you know you you get you're like hey it, it's bone dry leave it alone leave it alone leave it alone well it reaches a point where it does need a drink. I also give this guy a spritz, um, as you can see, and, and I'm using uh, distilled water um, on these plants, mainly because I use this on the next plant, and this is the Miracle Berry, 
Um, you guys got a chance to see me unwrap this. There's been so much more new growth. You can see these little brown. They start out brown um, there and uh, right here and they, they turn green and so as you can see up there I've got new leaves and that plant loves to be super soaking wet so I always 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 um, heavily 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 spray it um, before I put it back in and it does not like to have um, anything other than rainwater or distilled water you cannot use your typical tap water or your hose water or any of the above it will actually uh, harm the plant and you'll kill it so um, don't do that so that's kind of a quick little update on the citrus um, we will continue to take you along and monitor uh, the progress of, of these plants um, all the way up to the harvest time for the kumquat um, to when we get our first bear our first berry on the miracle berry um, the lemons we're not going to get any lemons this year and that really wasn't our goal the goal was to bring this puppy back to life and um, so far I, I think I'm doing a good job so hey guys wanted to also show you tonight what was going on with our peach tree now we harvested two peaches um, that we purposely saved um, we didn't I thought I had another peach growing it was an old peach that we never pulled off. I thought I got them all. Um, anyways, kind of funny. I was like, what is that? So, big problem with peach trees is that you get the oriental fruit um, moth. And, and what happens is this oriental moth will lay its larva and it will burrow in. And so I started noticing. Let me just find one. Okay, so like this. Do you see how this is dead okay and then if you look at the stem here at the tip it's fat right here there is a oriental moth larva inside of this and you can see where it went in let me just pull this away it goes it splits and goes inside of the tree and it burrows down and I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it um, or it could just still be small and I caught it but it is definitely ha has infected and you see how the plant starts to ooze this white sap that's its way of trying to heal itself so the first thing you want to do is you want to remove any damages that you see to your tips uh, you want to get them out of there um, you do not want this to stay in your tree you will continue to have problems if you leave it alone um, and so you just you just really don't want that um, this is not the ideal time for us to prune however um, we don't want this oriental moth to continue its life we got alcohol on me uh, in our tree we want it to go away so removing all of the areas that were dead or infected and you can see on the tip here which i'm going to be topping this tree um, this year anyways so this really doesn't matter uh, too much because i'm going to be uh, heavily pruning this guy back this year and as you can see, it's not everywhere. Um, it didn't happen everywhere on the plant, but it did happen in quite a few spots. And so we want to take, take the time to remove uh, those dead areas. And uh, we had a little bit of a Japanese problem, Japanese beetle uh, issue this year as well. Um, it didn't get it too bad. I was able to get them off, but it did eat a couple of the leaves. So next year we will uh, monitor this guy and, and uh, give it a little more care than what we did this year. Um, because hopefully this next year we will start to get fruit on these trees. We really hope that these trees next year will be fully um, bloomed up. Now we're not going to get hundreds of pounds of, of peaches and we know that. but. 
Um, we do hope to get quite a few, so at least more than two. By the way, best peach we've ever had. Um, but I wanted you guys to see exactly what was going on in case you've got a fruit tree um, and you see the tips of your um, uh, peach uh, branches uh, wilting over like that. A lot of people just are like, oh, it's the end of the season. It was too hot. Like it didn't get enough water. I need to water it like they're dying. No, you, you've actually got an insect problem, um, specifically uh, a moth problem. So uh, laying its egg. So look for that. If you see the tips dying, that's, that's what you've got going on. Get those branches removed. Um, so that way you don't have to worry about having this pest um, problem. Now, they also, because they're called the fruit, the oriental fruit moth, they will do the same thing to your peaches, okay? They will burrow inside your peach and they will uh, eat, eat it out, right? They'll eat the inside out and the peach will ooze a white uh, sap, that sap I was showing you, but it'll get long and it'll hang. So you wanna really try to do everything you can uh, to prevent. So we will be getting um, nets for these uh, in the off season this year. Um, fully covered nets that we will be able to put over top of these once they start bearing fruit um, so to hopefully prevent the moth from, from getting in. Um, and, and that way we don't have to worry about it. And then there's bird netting that you can get too. Um, so I haven't yet decided what we'll use uh, the bird netting will not stop the moss, but the uh, the other netting, the tighter netting, will. You just you, I've seen people wrap up their peaches individually um, to prevent them from getting in the peaches, um, but we'll just have to see. I haven't decided which route uh, we'll go, but I wanted you guys to see what what that was and, and kind of a little bit about the peach trees. Uh, I will take you in the process of, of pruning this when it when it comes time, but uh, unfortunately had to get those tips cut. All right, so before we head out for the evening, uh, I want to show you guys one last thing I'm kind of excited about, um, and that's our dragon fruit, right? The last time we did this video, we showed you our dragon fruit, and then we also showed you um, the fig tree and the progress that we're having with that. So real quick before we go, I want to take you guys over and I want to show you that. So come with me. All right, so would you look at this? We have gotten so much growth um, out of these. This little cutting here uh, got attacked by a little uh, caterpillar and it really did some damage. It was attached down here at the base of this dragon fruit here. Um, these are the American Beauty over here and it got attacked and so I, I wanted it really to start to grow here out of the top so I went ahead and I snipped it and but it had some some aerial roots on it. Um, dragon fruit likes to grab uh, and sends out aerial roots. So I, I just went ahead and I put it in the soil and I kept it moist. If this ends up working and, and this grows great, if it doesn't uh, because the cutting was too small and I didn't do it right, uh, it's not the end of the world, but, but it was worth a shot. This is all brand new growth here. This right here, that little tip, that's all brand new. And then this guy right here, like this, was the size of these. Look at this. Isn't that just amazing? So excited. It looks so healthy. These are those aerial roots I was talking about here that the plant sends out. Um, but as you can see, my soil is dry and it is time um, to water. Now they're in the cactus family, but they're not, you don't have to treat them like cactus. So. Like it doesn't, I don't have to wait to water. Like it, it's ready for a water. So I will go ahead and water that up. Um, I won't overly drench it. I'll just get it wet enough that, that the soil and, and all the way through is, is an even um, soak. Um, but so yeah, anyways, just wanted you guys to see that. We're so excited. We can't wait to take you on the journey of these when they start flowering um, and, uh, and fruiting. Like, oh, it's gonna be so cool. The other uh, thing is the fig. I wanted to show you guys the fig. So I know it's late in the season um, and it's very humid here in our zone. And so I do have a little bit of rust going on on some of the leaves. Uh, it's not terrible. I'm gonna prune this guy back. I want it to be more bushy. 
um, instead of lanky. And unfortunately, I, I got this from Lowe's. It was a, I kept waiting and waiting and waiting until they discounted it heavily um, because there's, it's not the brand that I want to grow here, but I got it for like next to nothing. So why not? But I saw videos. I've been watching a couple videos on pinching your fig tree uh, and how that promotes either the figs to grow um, that are forming and the figs form right here in the armpit so like on a tomato it would be a sucker right I don't know if you can see that little node there but we've got one forming over here that I'm quite excited about look at that that I believe right here is going to be a fig and so when you pinch a fig Basically, all you're doing is you're taking that top little part, right? I don't know if you can see that little point, this part here, and you're pinching it off, okay? And so I'll show you. And then the, this white substance, can you see it there? Mm -hmm. Okay? You don't want to really get that on your hands. Um, it's, it's irritable. Um, it'll really irritate your skin. Um, it looks milky. But that's all you do is you, you pop that top off and it promotes outward growth. So this now will start to branch out. Um, but it'll then take and allow anything in where a node was, right, to start forming your figs. Now this was a last ditch effort. We're, we're running out of time really. I mean, you, you, you need about, I think we need about 90 days. And I don't know if we're going to get it. I've got a heat lamp and grow lights, so we, we'll see what I can make happen. Um, and worst case, I've got this. If it starts to get cooler, uh, I can put it under there. But, I mean, 90 nights, I mean, we're in we're August, September, October. We may, I just don't know. I mean, sometimes we don't get our freezes until Thanksgiving um, into November. So I'm not really worried about a freeze. I just don't know if it's going to be hot enough to, to make this fig happen. Um, but we'll see. So I wanted you guys to see that quite excited. So those are the few things that we've got right now. There's a couple other things. Uh, unfortunately, I don't want to uh, babble on on this video. I just wanted to show you guys what was going on with some of our tropical things that we have and, um, and keep you posted. So Thank you guys so much. Um, if, this, if you've enjoyed this video, uh, like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you get notifications as we put new videos up. Uh, again, as always, it's our pleasure to have you here. Uh, we really enjoy uh, seeing you guys uh, like our videos and subscribe. Um, it, it's, it's just awesome to see. And if you have any questions or comments, put them down below. Uh, I'll make sure that we respond to them. Uh, thank you guys so much and have a wonderful night.